thank you everyone so much for being here this morning. This is actually our second live event for Spirit Week. We had breakfast with Dean Patrick this morning and now we're having coffee with Dean Ali. Dean Ali is new to the university starting in June of this year. And so we're very excited for you guys to learn more about him um, and his vision for the School of Informatics, Humanities and Social Sciences. So Dr. Ali, I'll let you take it from here. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope you and your family and, and loved ones are safe and healthy during this time. So I greatly appreciate you joining in today in the week of uh, spirit events. Uh, this, this, this is such a critical and, and important event uh, for, for RMU. Uh, with that, before I uh, introduce myself, uh, I, I suggested earlier that why don't we go around and just briefly introduce ourselves. So this way I know uh, what audience I'm speaking with. Uh, so uh, Jennifer, you, you, you wanna begin with, uh, uh, with you and then uh, we can uh, go around. Sure, I'm Jennifer Young. I'm the Director of Alumni Engagement here at Robert Morris University. I am in my 13th year here at Bobby Moe and it's great. We're so happy to have the students back on campus, um, even though it's a little limited and we can't always see their smiles on their faces, but we are really grateful. And so thank you everyone who's here today. I'm uh, Matt O'Brien here. Uh, I'm in the Office of Institutional Advancement as well. I'm the uh, director of university sponsorships here. I've been here about a little over five years now. So uh, looking forward to talking to everyone. Great, thank you. Well, and, uh, Matt Millett, I'm a class of 99, a proud alum, and uh, hard to believe that I graduated over 21 years ago. Uh, but I'm here today and excited to have Dean Ali at the university, and uh, I currently work in uh, institutional advancement at RMU. So excited to join today's coffee break. Thank you. I can go next. Um, hi, my name is Sarah Smith. I graduated from Robert Morris, Robert Morris University in 2019. Um, my undergrad in communication and a master's in organizational leadership. Um, little fun fact about me, I'm a legacy. My brother graduated in 2015 and my brother and my father graduated in 1977 and is also on the board. I was gonna say hi to Dr. Howard if he's still here. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. It's nice uh, meeting you today. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> hey, this is Heidi. Can you guys hear me now? Mm -hmm. Okay, you couldn't hear me before when somebody called me out. Apparently, my speaker doesn't work on my computer, so I had to get my headset. Um, I am Heidi. My maiden name was Hickel. I graduated in 2012 with a uh, undergrad in communication. I am now working as the program director for the computer information technology program at West Virginia Northern Community College. And you can't see my camera because I'm still getting my kids ready. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thank you. I think that leaves me. Hi, everyone. I'm Hyla Willis. I've been with RMU for, I think, a whopping 17 years. And I teach in the graphic design area of media arts, which recently merged with um, English to become the Department of Arts and Humanities. So. I'm, uh, I love design, I love working with our students and I'm really happy to see some alumni here today. Thank you, Professor Haila Wales. thank you. Um, and I'll finish up here. Josh Diller, I'm the Director of Development and Campaign Manager at RMU. I'm a graduate of this school as well. I got my, as is my colleague, Matt. Uh, we both got the MS in Organizational Leadership. I think Matt was 2019. And uh, I'm in the, the banner year of 2020. What a great year, huh? So, <laughs> great. Josh, thank you. So thank you all again. It is uh, such a pleasure meeting with you virtually today. Uh, so let me briefly uh, introduce myself and share with you my background uh, before I share my vision um, for the school uh, of uh, informatics, humanities, and, and, and social sciences. Uh, I have more than uh, 20 years of academic and leadership experience in various positions in both public and, and private sector uh, universities. Uh, before joining RMU, I was Associate Dean of School of Applied Science and Technology at Thomas Edison State University in New Jersey. Uh, previously, I have served as Director, Associate Vice President 
and advisor to the president of University of Maryland University College and also uh, Dean of Keller Graduate School of Management uh, in New York. Uh, in addition, I have industry consulting and, and government uh, contracting uh, experience as well. Uh, primarily, I have been teaching uh, cybersecurity and IT at bachelor's, master's, and doctoral levels. Uh, now let me share with you um, why I have been drawn to, to RFU and, and particularly the School of uh, Informatics, Humanities, and Social Sciences. Uh, I have been here just for a few months, but I'm highly impressed with the quality of our students, graduates, faculty, and all the staff members that we have. Uh, so they work really hard and they are so dedicated to uh, serving uh, the learning needs of our, our, our students. So, uh, first, why I, why I was brought, um, uh, drawn to RMU in general. RMU has a long history of innovation and providing um, highly um, um, uh, critical and important um, educational programs with extensive engagement to, uh, e with each and every student uh, I have served in, in, in major universities where students and, and faculty are, are just uh, numbers. Uh, but with RMU, um, uh, I have been really impressed. Uh, uh, the level of engagement that we have with our students is, is like a, a family environment where we really uh, care about students learning and, 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 and providing and expanding uh, career opportunities for them. Uh, with regards to, to the School of um, uh, Informatics, Humanities, and Social Sciences, um, it has a really great potential uh, for cross-disciplinary collaboration and, and growth. Our school is uh, organized in four different uh, departments. Uh, computer Information Systems in, is one department. Uh, communication and Organizational Leadership, um, Arts and Humanities, um, and um, uh, social sciences. So I believe there is a really great potential to, to, to bring that uh, cross-disciplinary uh, collaboration among our faculty and our programs to expand and, and create new opportunities for our students uh, in terms of uh, uh, new programs, expanded programs, and, and also enhancing uh, career opportunities uh, uh, for them. Uh, so um, my goal would be uh, uh, moving forward. I have been um, uh, looking into to, to different aspects since, since I'm new. Uh, and, and based on my experience, the external uh, experience that I bring uh, more than two decades of experience, and also in consultation with our um, faculty, with our students and, and our uh, alumni. So my goal and, and vision that I have refined uh, would be to uh, first to, to enhance that uh, cross-disciplinary collaboration and growth for um, of the School of Informatics and Humanities, and, and also outside the school with other, um, uh, with other schools at university as well, so we can create more opportunities uh, and, and, and also generate um, additional sources of revenues that we can invest back uh, in, in uh, services to our students, uh, professional development for our faculty and, 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 and overall uh, community. Uh, so uh, the other uh, goal I have, as, as you all know, that there is such a significant competition in academia. The landscape is, is, is so competitive. So my goal would be to find our, our niche areas and expand and, and, and increase our, our enrollments in, in, in all our programs in, in creative manners, uh, such as uh, uh, working with different uh, organizations to um, uh, create more um, um, micro-credentials. And, and also giving credits to, to, to those who, who already have experience and those micro-credentials from industry and, 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 and uh, government so, so that they could be counted for and they don't have to repeat those, those areas and, and, and subject matters again while they are in the program. So this way they can accelerate their programs. Uh, and also under the leadership of uh, Dr. Howard, we have a renewed focus on increasing um, a pipeline of transfer students from um, uh, community colleges. So under his leadership, we, we, we are really expanding uh, uh, those, those opportunities for uh, uh, community colleges students to join our, our high quality programs uh, so that they can benefit from, uh, from uh, our offerings. 
Uh, so we uh, have been working with different community, co the, uh, community colleges uh, uh, and, and expanding that. So uh, I just met uh, a few days ago with, with the uh, Dean of um, uh, Butler Community Colleges and, and we are looking into six different programs related to uh, the uh, computer and, and information systems and cybersecurity to, to forge those, those articulations. So I believe those, those articulations, those type of uh, articulations will create a good pipeline of transfer students to, to our, um, uh, our programs. Uh, and, and also we have been looking at the Calm Skills program. It has delivered a really excellent um, learning opportunities for our students. Uh, it is part of our, our general education core and, and we are refining our RMU core competencies and, and with the revised new core competencies, we will be aligning our comm skills program to better serve the communication needs uh, and, and learning of uh, our students so they could be successful uh, in their careers. Uh, and, and also I'll be continue uh, working with, with our partners and expanding those partnerships to create uh, more career opportunities for our students uh, in terms of um, uh, internships and also after their uh, graduation. So uh, that will be uh, high on my uh, agenda as well uh, because uh, RMU has been really successful in terms of our placement rate. Uh, particularly, I, I, was, I was highly impressed uh, with our uh, um, uh, cybersecurity programs. We have uh, uh, almost 100% placement rate uh, uh, in, in those programs. And, and we wanted to mirror that for our other uh, programs as well. Uh, so those are uh, some of my, um, uh, my um, main goals to, to, to bring basically more opportunities for our students and, and, and also to increase uh, engagement uh, with our alumni, uh, particularly at the school level as well, in addition to uh, uh, the university level, because uh, I believe they, that's their home within the university. And if we have more engagement, so they would have, uh, they would be more related to what the programs they have graduated from and, and would love to, to, to listen uh, later from you all, what suggestions do you have, how we can further uh, increase your engagement so, so that we can bring more value uh, to, to, to these programs and also to, uh, to our students. Uh, uh, and, and also, since you are our ambassadors to in, in the places that you work with, so, so the word of mouth goes a long way about our programs. So I, I would love to, to know, uh, to see how we can uh, increase that uh, collaboration with you so, so that we can also expose our programs and, and the uh, learning opportunities that we provide for our students. Uh, to, to more uh, prospective students so, so they could be attracted to, uh, to, to, to these programs. Uh, so with that, I'll, I'll open it up for, uh, uh, for question and answers. Uh, and, and also I would, I would uh, love to hear your feedback uh, to see how we can further enhance our programs uh, and also the uh, services for our students uh, and, and engaging our, our uh, alumni. Uh, in, in, in the learning process for, for our students. And, and, and for me as a new Dean, would love to, to learn more uh, from you. Uh, I have received two questions, which I will, uh, I will uh, answer as, as, we, as we continue our conversation. Uh, but uh, please, uh, uh, I'll, I'll open it up for uh, questions uh, and, and feel free to, to ask any questions, please. Hey, this is Heidi. Hey, um, who did you say was in charge of the transfer agreements? Because I've been trying to set up a meeting with you guys for two years to help get Northern on a transfer level. And uh, the dean of our, our library team, uh, Shella, uh, is is our uh, point of contact for um, our, um, our transfer uh, students, particularly community colleges. Um, uh, but also, in addition to that, uh, um, uh, he works closely with the schools with the deans with the department heads and faculty and also with the admissions and enrollment so it's a team effort but he has been recently uh, assigned as the point of contact for our community colleges um, uh, articulations okay i'd been i'd been told it was dr wu so i'd emailed him for the past two years and i've never got a response so uh, yeah, so we it's it's been a it's been a uh, was was kind of a scattered approach. Didn't know who is really a point of contact for uh, uh, 
uh, for the articulation agreements. And so recently we have enhanced that effort and, and we, we are working more closely uh, with Tim and, and admissions and enrollment services to enhance that. So uh, please send me your questions uh, and, and I would be glad to, um, to, to uh, get you the answer uh, very soon. So uh, feel free to, to uh, send me an email directly and I'll follow up with uh, Dr. Wu and uh, to get you um, uh, answer for, for your question. Do, do you have any specific questions? Uh, no, I just know like when I came to RMU, I had transferred from what was JCC and is now EGCC in Jefferson County, Ohio. And um, I noticed that we didn't have any agreements with them, but we have an agreement with pretty much every other college that's within an hour of West Virginia Northern and um, except you guys. So we are trying to come up with something to help steer because we do have students that want to go to RMU but they you know they'll come to us and they'll take gen eds and um then they'll end up either not going because they you know they, nobody knows what transfers and they have to go through the process on their own instead of having something actually set up yeah no thank you for bringing that to my attention i i, I fully agree with you that um uh, particularly in this environment, since we have online programs as well, and particularly West Virginia, we, we do get um, a lot of students from that state and uh, would love to, to explore those opportunities with you more uh, because my goal is to expand our articulation agreements beyond Pittsburgh area because uh, we, we have other uh, markets too. I, I came from uh, Washington DC area and uh, so we have a great reputation when it comes to our, our PhD programs. We have significant number of students from that area. And, and also with the online um, uh, access and, 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 and reach. So uh, I have some, some um, contacts in that area would we'll be exploring um, um, uh, articulation agreements with different schools uh, in, in, in Virginia and, 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 and also uh, Maryland. And, uh, and, and, and overall Pennsylvania. So please send me um, uh, those suggestions. And uh, so we'd love to work closely with you so we can, we can uh, develop those types of um, uh, articulation agreements. Sounds good. Dr. Ali, I think you mentioned, was it micro certifications in your, uh, in your overview? Is that, is that, am I saying that correctly? Did I hear that? Yes, yes. So basically, uh, micro credential, uh, what, what I was referring to now, the employers, they don't want to wait for uh, someone to uh, graduate from a four years or, or, or two years master's and, and, and be productive. So what they wanted to do is they want to have more of those micro credentials where they can develop um, skills and competencies in a particular area within a short period of time. So um, universities have been offering like micro masters, micro bachelors, and also certificate programs. Uh, so those types of uh, programs, and also some of the um, uh, micro credentials that are offered by uh, some of the industry. And, and uh, so we can look into to those and, and, and see how those could be aligned and equivalent to some of our courses. So this way, uh, if they already have those micro credentials, they have the um, experience and, um, and also knowledge in that area. So they would be able to get credit for those so they can accelerate their programs here and they don't have to repeat that content again as part of our overall uh, curriculum for uh, undergrad and, and, and uh, courses. So, so that's, that's the concept behind it. And also we'll be looking into offering similar type of micro credentials ourselves where we can generate uh, alternative source uh, of revenues for the university. And at the same time, those would be mapped towards our curriculum. So this way, uh, whoever takes those micro credentials with us, so they would be able to be productive right away on their job so they can enhance their competencies and skills and also uh, that would provide a pathway towards their uh, degree um, program if, if they, they prefer to, to go through the degree program. I think that sounds really good. I know as we uh, connect and network with alumni throughout the region, 
uh, I, I want to say like pre-pandemic, I heard a lot about upskilling and reskilling, and that seemed to be a big concern as we talked about, um, you know, connecting them with possible interns from RMU and, and different uh, opportunities. So uh, it, it seems to have been put on, it's a little less brought up lately because some things have happened since then, but no, I think that would be a, a really good addition. I could see like, um, accounting being a crossover with security and different things you know so uh, where they probably don't want to go back for a full cyber security deal but to get in you know some of those skills um, yeah that would be i think a great addition so it sounds like a really good idea glad to hear you bring it up uh, yeah a lot of other uh, universities are doing that because the landscape has been changing and also our new generation they have a different they, they like on-demand learning uh, and and they want to learn something fast so that they can use that um, uh, on, on, on their job in, in, and, and so I think those type of credentials are in, in high demand and more and more universities are, are recognizing those credentials uh, and, and giving credits for those as well at the same time. So also it, it gives them exposure to our programs to see the quality of our program that they, they, they can experience if once they take those uh, micro credentials. And those are, those are relatively really uh, less expensive than, than taking um, full uh, courses, uh, so um, so that's why those are those are in high demand because those are comparatively uh, less costly, and and at the same time it prepares them for for the skills that they need right away on on, on their uh, uh, jobs. Um, so yeah, so we'll we'll be looking into that and and pursuing that opportunities um, to 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 bring uh, more uh, learning experiences for for our students and also for our uh, alumni because learning never stops so it's it's continuous learning and sometimes we we look for uh, new prospective students and we forget that our alumni they have also continuous uh, learning um, uh, needs uh, so we will be reaching out to to our alumni as well uh, and and uh, share with them all those opportunities so so they they are aware of those uh, those opportunities, not for themselves, but also for not only for themselves, but also for their colleagues, their family members, and 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 others that they interact with. Um, um, so 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 that we are we are their uh, continuous uh, source of uh, education and 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 learning. So so I would be uh, reaching out to to all our faculty and and sharing what the great things that are happening um, uh, in our school. Uh, so, so that you are all engaged um, uh, in, 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 that, uh, uh, in that pursuit. Uh, I have received this uh, question early on. It was uh, submitted uh, uh, by one of the participants uh, saying, my daughter will be uh, incoming freshman as is, uh, and is undecided, looking to understand outcomes and job potential in upcoming years. That's an excellent uh, question. Uh, so I have seen that uh, um, um, that uh, if you uh, are undecided and, uh, and, and you don't have really good information provided by a university and a school and a program, it gets really difficult and, and you get lost as, as, as a student to, to see what particular program I should um, pursue. Because at the end of the day, we wanted to see what career opportunities this particular program can bring to me. Uh, in terms of um, enhancing uh, uh, my personal um, growth, uh, in terms of uh, finding a better uh, job or uh, enhancing uh, uh, my, my current jobs and, and, and advancing to, to, to the next level. And at the end of the day, increasing, uh, uh, increasing um, uh, income level. Uh, so those are, those are excellent questions. Um, so my, we, we recently, I wanted to share with you that we are uh, in the process of subscribing to, to Burning Glass. It is an excellent tool where uh, it brings all that information into one place. So we will be, well, uh, as soon as we, we have that finalized, hopefully it will be very soon. So we will be sharing all that information about career growth, what are the different job opportunities available in, in, in different areas. And, and where they can find jobs and what's the income level so that we have that information easily available for our students and our alumni and so they can benefit from it. So that's, that will be a really a great addition to uh, in that regard. But with regards to now, 
So I highly recommend that you reach out to the department head and also the department head would uh, align you with the, uh, with the relevant faculty members to share with you the programs, the various programs that you are looking into to see what would be the best options, where the uh, most jobs are available and, 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 and where to find those. Uh, and, and also what uh, learning outcomes that you can accomplish so, so that you could be ready for, uh, for jobs in, in, in the real world. Uh, so my uh, suggestion is to um, reach out to the department heads uh, who would align you with the, uh, with the uh, academic advisor. If you're already a student, you should reach out to your uh, academic advisor and, and asking all those questions because they work in the field and, and they have experience and they have um, um, the knowledge to see where uh, what what jobs they, uh, the that particular program will prepare you for, so uh, so that would be my advice to uh, and also one of the other I'm I'm working currently with the, our marketing uh, and and our uh, uh, public relations office to um, make that information available on each and every uh, program web page too, so so that um, once you come to the website so you know what type of um, uh, opportunities are available by pursuing that program and, and, and also some of the statistics to, to, to look at to see where the potential market is for those jobs and, and how you can pursue those. Uh, and, and our career services is, is really great too. I'm, I'm impressed with the placement rates that we have. And uh, so that would be another uh, uh, point to, to, to contact. Uh, but just in the beginning to to see what programs you you need you 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 you're, you you wanted to pursue and what are the career opportunities, so the best thing would be to contact uh, if you don't have already a, an academic advisor uh, assigned to you, uh, so you 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 can contact um, uh, uh, department heads who would align you with a particular um, uh, faculty uh, member so who can uh, provide you that guidance. Any questions uh, with regards to that, P please feel free to, to ask. Dean Ali, I have a question. Um, RMU is just so well known for preparing students for the professional world. However, sometimes I think um, the landscape of, of jobs, the traditional job and the traditional career has really changed. Um, and uh, a lot of things are moving toward precarious forms of labor, gig work, uh, not all of which pays terribly. Like even the high tech sector has a uh, really long-term independent contractor situations. Um, are we, or can we prepare students for this, this new mindset and for uh, understanding um, how they can sustain themselves in this new, professional landscape, which doesn't necessarily revolve around a traditional job or a traditional career. Yeah, no, thank you. That, that's, that's an excellent um, uh, answer. And um, yeah, so that's, that's uh, something I think we need to, what we need to do on, on the program level is to continue to update our, our curriculum so that we are uh, in response to, 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 to that need. That puts uh, us, uh, a faculty and, 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 and administration on our, uh, um, um, uh, we, we have to be on our, our um, uh, uh, foot to, to really um, look at those, those, those trends to see what's happening in, in, in the marketplace. And um, uh, also now we have advisory boards for, for our different programs to also seek what's happening in the industry in terms of uh, those types of uh, jobs that are, that are changing. And, um, and how we can better prepare students to, to so, so that they could uh, be successful in this new environment. So as you indicated, those, the traditional uh, types of careers are, are, are slowly um, melting away and, and there are more uh, temporary jobs and there are uh, uh, more independent freelance type of jobs as well. Uh, and, and, and see how we can better prepare our students. So that's why I think those micro-credentials would be really um, uh, very successful and, and have been in high demand because um, you have to retool yourself really fast. You can't just wait to complete your entire degree 
and 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 be ready for 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 that type of job market so that continuous learning and on demand uh, type of learning would be really um uh, critical as 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 we um venture into this new era of of uh, career opportunities uh, so so that they could be prepared and can retool themselves really fast uh, within uh, within short period of time without waiting for uh, for a, a long uh, term um, uh, graduation uh, plans uh, because uh, they they have to retool themselves in this current environment so uh, so so that they could be ready for those type of uh, new types of uh, careers um, and I would love to to hear more from our audience too because they are working in the field and to see after they have graduated to see what they uh, they have experienced, uh, were they able to be really prepared for, for, for the careers that they selected? Um, just, just overall academia, I, have been, I, uh, I hear this, not, not RMU, uh, but um, um, other uh, academic institutions uh, that um, academia has not been really highly successful in preparing students for the real world because some of the institutions they focus more on on theoretical aspects of, of their programs so i'm glad we have more applied type of programs at rmu because the future is to have more applied type of programs where students can gain hands-on experience as opposed to just just focusing on on theoretical aspects of a subject matter so um updating our curriculum and um, uh, uh, incorporating those those um, uh, real world um, uh, experience opportunities in our uh, programs would be highly critical uh, in terms of uh, preparing students for the, the, these new types of uh, jobs uh, and also enhancing opportunity internship opportunities for our students to to work with the industry while they are uh, studying so they can work on those projects and gain that uh, hands-on experience so they could be exposed to to what's happening in the real world and and relate back that to 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 to, to their um, uh, to their program of um, uh, studies i hope i answered uh, your question uh, professor wells thank you so any other questions i have an, uh, one other question um so i'll i'll answer that later but uh, please uh, uh, and also i wanted to pose a question now for you because my goal is not, um, uh, to to everyone uh, here my goal is to enhance engagement with our, our, uh, with our alumni. So uh, I, I would love to hear from you to see how engaged you have been with RMU and what do you recommend so, so that I could work with you all and, and develop a strategy and plan so, so that you, you have a more say in it, what we do and, and, and also to get that continuous feedback from you so, so, so that we could um, update and improve our, our, our services uh, for our students based on your feedback, what you have experienced, uh, and, and, and also um, uh, how, how you wanted to be more engaged so we can facilitate those ways for you. So I'll open it up for your questions and suggestions in that regard, uh, and, and, and would love to, to answer your questions too to see what we have been doing in that area. So any alumni who wanted to, uh, to begin and, and, and uh, share your, your recommendations, how we can further enhance our engagement with, with our alumni. So while you think about your questions and recommendations, so what I'll do, I'll move on to, to, to the second question that I have uh, received. Uh, and, and these are the two questions I already answered uh, the first one. So the second question which I have received is, have you ever considered compression planning as a possible certification for students or in the organizational leadership master uh, program? Uh, that, that's an excellent uh, question. Um, we have not yet considered that as, as a possible certification for, for students, but it is, a, it is a, uh, an excellent area uh, that we should look into uh, so, so the way uh, we will be considering different programs and offering is to look at the market value to, to see what's the demand for, for, for a specific uh, new uh, offering. Uh, excuse me. So, uh, so in this case, what, what I'll do is I'll, um, 
reach out to the department head. And uh, so we will, we will do some research to see what's the demand for this, um, uh, this particular area and um, what type of jobs students can get and, um, and, and how many students we can attract to, uh, to, to this uh, new, um, uh, new um, uh, potential uh, certification. Would love to, to hear more whoever submitted this, this question to send me an email and provide me additional information. Uh, and, and also I'll check with, um, to see if we cover this particular area in our organizational leadership master uh, program. So I'll, I'll, I'll also uh, investigate that, but this is an excellent um, recommendations. And I would love to hear more from you who have submitted this um, question. Um, one other the, the, the way we, we can explore this type of um, uh, uh, creation of new uh, certification is if an uh, organization is uh, interested in, in this particular area and wanted to train their, um, their employees uh, we can work with them to, to, to develop a custom um, certificate uh, in that area. Uh, and so, so that we can uh, serve their learning needs, their employee uh, learning needs. So if you see those type of um, opportunities and potential, please reach out to us and, and, and we would love to explore those opportunities with you in, in, in more depth. Uh, but those are some of the, the ways that we, we can look into uh, these new types of uh, offerings. Um, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's so we, we, we are also looking into a variety of, of different programs to see what are really in demand nowadays and, and, and also uh, our existing uh, program portfolio to see if the portfolio we offer is really uh, in, in, in demand and, and in response to, to, to the market needs and the learning needs of uh, employers. So we uh, will be continuously seeking feedback from our advisory boards, from our alumni and from our students uh, to refine our, our existing uh, program portfolio and also identify opportunities uh, such as this for new programs and certifications. Because uh, at the end of the day as academia, we have to be uh, in response to those needs and, 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 and stay current. Um, otherwise, those programs can go really obsolete in a, in a very short time. So we have been looking in the um, computer and information systems portfolio uh, and, and, and see how we can further refine and retool those programs. Uh, and, and also, Professor Willis can, can share with you, uh, we are uh, turning uh, some of our um, minors into majors in the, in the media arts uh, area because the goal is to uh, enhance and make those programs visible because those are such high quality programs and those have been staying as minors because when the students come to, 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 um, to join an institution, they look first for majors and not minors, minors comes uh, next. So our goal is to um, uh, turn those minors into majors and further enhance those programs so, so that more can, can benefit from, from those um, excellent and high quality programs we have uh, in, 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 in media arts area. Uh, and, and we are doing the same thing with the communication and, and organizational leadership programs, looking into the portfolio, existing portfolio, to see where we need to further enhance those program offerings. Uh, same thing we did with our uh, Doctor of Science program, we realized uh, that the demand in, in the U.S. is more for a PhD uh, program. And so we uh, have transformed that uh, uh, Doctor of Science into the uh, PhD program. And, uh, and, and also we have enhanced the curriculum um, uh, to, to make it more relevant to, to the industry needs. So it is an executive level program with more applied approach uh, so, um, so that more um, um, uh, of our um, uh, students can benefit from, from that program uh, and not like those traditional uh, theoretical types of uh, programs uh, that you go to and it may take you forever. Uh, and, and the new PhD program, uh, it's three years, it's accelerated program. And that's what the students and the market wants. And we, we, we have been uh, in response to, um, uh, to that need. Uh, one other thing that I, I really liked about RMU is that we are really agile and dynamic. We, we respond to 
uh, the industry needs, learning needs of our students in, in a faster manner than you will see in, in some of the traditional schools. We are just changing as a program can take forever. Uh, but I think um, RMU is, is, is really um, uh, excellent uh, in, in, in that regard and, and responsive to, to, to the needs of um, uh, marketplace. So because I think that is our responsibility that we wanna give the best and current and relevant education to our students. Uh, they uh, invest significant uh, time, um, money on their education. So it, it has to be uh, well worth it. And I believe um, uh, pursuing programs here at RMU that are really in response to, to, to the needs, the current needs of the marketplace uh, would really put our students at, at a competitive um, edge. So I, I'm still seeking that question and recommendations from our alumni to see how we can further um, uh, improve our engagement uh, with, our, uh, with our alumni, uh, please. I'll do the other thing that uh, when asked a question and you don't have a great answer, you, you reverse it. So how about you, Dr. Ali? What, what have you done in, in your other experiences that you found successful that um, you know, a number of us here, Sarah's got the alumni perspective and a little removed so she could tell you if she thought it was something of interest and you've got some people on the call that could help you out and you've got a professor there that could, uh, you know, perhaps think of ways that uh, she could connect with former students. So, what do you what do you think has worked in the past that you might like to try? Or thank thank you for that that questions excellent questions. I didn't want to impose my uh, my um, uh, my uh, bias how how we should go about uh, engaging our faculty. But I'll share with you some of my experiences I have seen in in institutions. Once a student graduate, it's just a goodbye forever with the student. They never go back to engage with, with their, with their uh, uh, graduates. So, which is unfortunate. We don't want to do that here at, uh, at RMU. So, um, my, uh, what I have seen is to um, uh, involve them in, in, in different um, activities, particularly on our um, advisory boards, uh, the different advisory boards that we have. So, so that they can, um, because they have experience while going through the program and also now they have experience as, as uh, in the real world so they can bring really useful um, guidance and, 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 and feedback um, and advice to, uh, to enhance our, our, our programs. Another way would be uh, I have seen which, which I have also um, um, instituted in, in, in my past um, uh, uh, institutions was to creating this mentorship for our students with alumni, pairing our students with alumni who are successful in the field while they are studying at the same time. So they serve as an, um, a mentor to, 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 to our students. Uh, so that's something I, I wanted to explore further because once you graduate, so I think it will be such a great co contribution, not to the school and students, but I think to the overall society, because if you see if, if uh, if, if a student could be successful because of your mentorship and your advice, that would be such a great, great contributions and achievement in, in, in our lives as, as, as alumni. So that's something I think would be, um, uh, I, I would be further exploring with our alumni to see uh, what, what uh, they think about those, that, that aspect. Uh, and also like this, this, uh, uh, this event, so, um, uh, we, we need to have more of these type of uh, engagement with our alumni, not just only for this week, uh, the day of giving, but beyond that. So, so we, we can uh, get their, their, their feedback and, and their engagement, uh, enhance their engagement on a continuous basis uh, because it shouldn't be just a one-time thing. And uh, so we need to, um, uh, and, and also other aspect I was thinking because some of our alumni, I would say, a lot of our alumni, they are highly successful. We need to profile their success. Uh, and so that we can show that how they, they, the other students can be inspired to, to, to reach to those, uh, the, the, the heights of that, that success. So we need to, we need to promote our, our, the achievements of our alumni further uh, and, and, and involve them in, 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 in variety of ways uh, and, 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 and see how we can enhance our, um, um, 
um, more, um, uh, hopefully when we get to, to some normal time and in inviting uh, alumni to, to on-campus activities, uh, so where we can meet and exchange that in person. And, uh, but we shouldn't wait for that. I think this virtual environment provides still a good, uh, good substitute uh, while we are uh, passing through this time. Uh, so, so that we have more engagement and communication and uh, so, so that we can work together uh, because you're still, uh, whenever I see uh, an alumni uh, somewhere in an event or somewhere, they say, oh, I, I graduated from, from your uh, institution. Then I say, oh, so you are a part of our family uh, because you are part of our family. So it's not just uh, while you're a student here and, and we are engaged with you, we want to engage with you uh, for, 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 for long time to come uh, and, and uh, on, a, on a regular uh, basis. So, so those are just, just a few thoughts, uh, Josh. Uh, thank you for, for your uh, questions. Sarah? Yeah, I was to say, if I can chime in. So uh, something right now that, especially for me, so when I graduated, I didn't necessarily jump straight into the job market. I was working a part-time job and got promoted to a supervisor position. So I stayed there for a few months until COVID hit. And then I sadly left due to both of my parents being very at risk for the virus that's going around right now. But what I decided to do instead was um, something I think that RMU could really take a benefit to and maybe add it into curriculums would be just offering again, to connect with alumni, informational interviews for the students, because right now I'm currently pursuing, I pursue a career in human resources. I'm looking, so I hopped on LinkedIn, I found a couple of connections and I said, hey, who can connect me with somebody who's worked in recruiting and benefits and employer law? And so I've just been doing that for the past two months, attending networking events, just anything like that. So I feel like that's something that could be beneficial because I know we do the mock interviews. At least I remember in my communications degree, you do the mock interview with the career center. And I thought that was very beneficial, but I think it'd be fun to flip it around and have the students actually go out and say, you know, like say it's a graphic design major, actually find an alumni who's been doing graphic design for a few years, connect them with that alumni. So that way they can just ask questions, you know, what can I expect in the field? What kind of responsibilities do you do? Like what's your day-to-day -day life like just to get a new perspective. And it's also for me, like now I'm not as terrified to jump into the HR field because I feel like I now have a better understanding of what I can see going into that career. And then also, um, I was the one who put the compression planning in. So what is your email, oh. Dean Ali? Because I'd love to send you some more info about that. Okay, great, great. Excellent, excellent recommendation. So thank you. Thank you for that. Because um, yes, our students, they, they, need to, they need to get that uh, practical experience, how interview is, is going to work. And, and uh, also our alumni, they, since they have already been successful in those interviews and they, they interview on a regular basis within their organizations. So what would be a great, um, better experience than that for, for, uh, for a student? So particularly with the mentorship program, I think see how we can bring that together so we can, we can pair our, our um, students with, with, those, um, with those alumni. Uh, we, when, when I worked for University of Maryland, um, University College, we, we um, submitted a grant to develop that mentorship program and uh, from the Department of Education in Maryland. And they were really excited and we, we received that, um, that grant and we developed um, a system, IT system, where alumni will put their preferences to see what, in what area, in what program, they wanted to work with and, uh, and could be paired with the student. And um, so, and, and then the students will put their preferences. So it will pair those, those together in an in a, in a, in a automated um, form. So that was really successful and it was, um, uh, uh, it was supported by that grant and, and really helped our students uh, a long way in finding uh, careers in jobs. And, 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 and be prepared for those, um, those uh, mock interviews. And, and, and uh, yeah, so that, that's great. Thank you for, for, um, for your questions about compression uh, planning. As I mentioned, so we are continuously looking into new offerings that are in demand. And uh, so would love to hear more from you about this, this particular area and uh, explore that uh, further to, to see what we can do in that area. Well, great. Well, we are closing in on the end of our coffee hour with Dean Ali. So I want to say thank you to everyone who has joined us and especially to Dean Ali for taking the time today to um, speak with us and tell us more about himself and about his vision for the School of Informatics, Humanities, and Social Sciences. 
We hope that you all have a great day. And please remember tomorrow is our third day of giving. You can go to rmu.edu slash day of giving and go on and support the school. So again, it was a pleasure meeting you. Have a wonderful uh, day.